Students collect data and conduct experiments as part of every inquiry-based curriculum, including EIE. As educators, we know the importance of engaging students in hands-on experiments. But when elementary students collect data, all sorts of things can happen. When your students produce data that's different from what you expect, what do you do? Let's take a look at an example from a real classroom. The engineering challenge for these students is to design a lighting system for a model of an underground ancient Egyptian tomb. They've already done some experiments, including shining a flashlight into a box and scoring the light intensity at different locations. Now, their teacher is collecting results. So I just want to collect some data from you. Make a fist for zero. If your score is one, give me one finger, two for two fingers, three for three fingers, four for four. All right. Michael's a three, Brian's two, Ayana's three, Olivia's one. We can tell that we've got some varying results here. Jessica expected her students to have consistent results, but these numbers are all over the map. Usually when there's this much variation in the data, it's because students used inconsistent testing methods or because they didn't understand the scoring system. In this case, that turns out to be what happened. Jessica later learned that one of her students had misinterpreted the scale used to measure the light's intensity. After the sharing at the carpet, the speaking member of that group, she came up to me and she said, I really think I did something wrong with these scores. So I went over with her. I said, so really you flipped that scale. Every time you should have had a four, you gave yourself a zero. And every time you should have had a three, you gave yourself a one. And so she said, Oh, well that makes a ton more sense. One strategy you can use to help children accurately collect and score data is to run through an example with them. Let's now take a look at a second grade classroom where the teacher is collecting data after his students have built and tested three different types of bridges. Beam bridges, arch bridges, and deep beam bridges. The tests involve seeing how many weights each type of bridge could support. Even though Steve thought he had accurately modeled the testing procedure, students are getting varying results. Take out from your green folders your data sheets for me, please. Take out the ones that have all the bridge information on it. Which was the bridge that held the least amount of weight? Uh, Jada. How much weight did it support? Eight. Eight. With how much weight? Oh. Three. Arch bridge with four. Oh, you guys, it was a completely different. Wow. Okay. As students share their results, Steve can't hide his surprise. But he doesn't attempt to explain the discrepancies. Instead, he asks his students to come up with explanations. One student realizes that how the weights were placed on their bridge may have affected their results. That's kind of confusing to me. Because wouldn't it be the same thing if if it's if everyone does it in. Maybe they threw it in and then they got the links. All right, friends. Let's talk. John was telling me why they have the beam bridge and we have the arch. He said maybe they were throwing um the weights in. So you're thinking that you guys threw in your weights? We did. Oh. Well, at first, and then you told us, then Grace told us to drop them in lightly, so we had to do it all over again. So you redid your experiment again, so this ended up being when you placed... Well, we didn't redo that one. We, we did all the others. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That is a huge realization. They just admitted, which is fine, thank you for admitting, I love honesty, that they redid the other experiments using light weight, but they forgot to go back to the arch bridge and gently place it. Is their data off? Did they do something different for one bridge than the rest of the bridges? So can we use their data? No, because it's not treated equally. That's a hard lesson to learn, isn't it? In this case, a data discrepancy allowed for a fabulous teaching moment. 
The unexpected result allowed Steve to guide his students to think about what might have caused their discrepant results and come up with possible explanations. This provides an authentic opportunity for children to think about variables and build their understanding of what constitutes a fair test. In this next clip, students are designing a parachute to land a payload on another planet. The goal is for the parachutes to fall slowly. Students dropped their parachutes down a stairwell three times and calculated their average drop speed. The students in this class have already done several EIE units and have experience analyzing data in both engineering and math. As Jean collects the data from the groups, she pushes her students to think about their classmates' data and identify trends. Team one, average drop speed. Two. Point seven. What was your canopy diameter? Uh, 14. 14 inches. And your suspension line length? 21. All right, I want you to look at this. Can everybody see the data? Yeah. All right, look at it for one minute. And I want you to talk about, with your team, is there any connection or correlation between these two things and this? Nor. I noticed that the people who had sh shorter suspension lines and bigger canopies had um, lower uh, average drop speed. Okay. As the discussion wraps up, Jean gets the opportunity to drive home another important lesson about data. One student notices a discrepancy in the data that he doesn't understand. Two parachutes had identical canopy sizes and identical suspension line lengths, but they dropped at slightly different rates. Yes. How does number four and number eight have the same thing, but they have different drops? Four and eight have the same what? Oh, same this? Yeah. Okay, and different drops? Nathan makes a good point. You would think it would be the same. How would we get data to be really, really close? Close to what we think. <laughs> over and over and over and over. Test and test and test. Nathan naturally assumes that when all of the variables are held constant, the experiment should get the same results every time. This gives Gene the opportunity to point out one of the realities of scientific research. Results can vary. For accurate results, you need to do many iterations of the same experiment. The more opportunities your students get to conduct hands-on experiments, the more they'll come to understand why controlling variables and multiple trials are so important. As an engineering educator, you should feel confident that no matter how the results turn out, rich discussions will emerge when your students collect their own data.